Okay, leading off uh, here this weekend for us at Ford Championship Weekend is Roger Penske, one of the most accomplished owners in the history of motorsports. Roger's organization has won 12 open wheel championships, 15 times they've been to victory lane in Indianapolis 500. He's won one NASCAR Nationwide Series championship with Brad Keselowski in 2010 and is seeking the organization's first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series title this Sunday afternoon here at Homestead Miami Speedway. So Roger, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. And uh, maybe just uh, for, for starters, if you could just talk about uh, the performance of your race teams this year, and in particular the number two car, who is a uh, points leader heading into the season finale. Well, obviously, uh, you know, we're thrilled to be in the position we are here you know, at, at the last race at Homestead, I think that uh, you know, we look back on the season, I guess it's been a building season from the very starting point with uh, Brad three or four years ago when we first got together. But I think, uh, you know, as I sum it up, uh, you know, he's uh, earned the respect uh, of the garage area, the drivers, the crews, the officials, and certainly he's uh, gained a lot of fans. And for me, uh, you know, basically it's been consistency. And I think he's a great athlete. You would have to put him right at the top from the standpoint of what he's been able to accomplish, you know, over the last uh, several weeks. And, you know, it's his chance uh, on Sunday to get to the top, a rung that he's been trying for, for for many years. Obviously, his parents have supported him, as many of these great drivers that come out of families who have racing backgrounds. And he's certainly done that and to me uh, we're very fortunate to have him part of Penske Racing. He's made us a better team. Thank you Roger. We'll take questions now for Roger Penske. If you would raise your hand. We have a couple of wireless mic holders. We'll start here with Monty. We'll go to Lee and then we'll go back in the back to Claire. State your name, affiliation, and please try to limit yourself to one question. Monty, Lee, and then Claire. Go ahead. Monty's right there on your left. Thank you. Microphones coming from everywhere. Monty Dutton, Gaston Gazette. Roger, in your long career in motorsports, you've had, you've had so many drivers from Mark Donahue and Rick Mears and dozens and dozens of others. Of whom does Brad Keselowski remind you? Well, I'd have to say, uh, you know, digging down deep, uh, a lot like Rick Mears, uh, really understated, but someone that uh, when it was time to dig deep and make it happen, the consistency, and, you know, obviously uh, he's a winner. And I'd have to put him in that category, which is a pretty special class as far as I'm concerned. Let's go with Lee Spencer and then Claire B. Lang. Go ahead, Lee. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Most people know Open Wheel is really your true love, but you've dabbled here for 40 years now. Why did you keep coming back? And, you know, what is it about this? You know, when did it change where this really became a focus? Was it after the first nationwide championship? Was it... Just Brad in general, I mean, what, you know, what really made you guys dig in and, and put your emphasis here on NASCAR? Well, Lee, I think you know, I'm a goal-oriented person, and uh, there's no question that, uh, you know, winning a NASCAR championship at the elite level is something that uh, everybody in racing wants to accomplish, and we hadn't done that. And I think we spread ourselves through many different series with uh, great success, but We've never quite gotten to the top. Obviously, in 93 and 94, we were second and third with Rusty. And then we really uh, have not, uh, you know, had the results. But to me, uh, uh, this is about an opportunity. You know, it's, uh, it's not about uh, how much money you have and what you can buy on the racetrack. You know, it's about the people. It's about the human capital that we've been able to put together. As I said to Paul Wolf and uh, to, to certainly to Brad and, and Tim and Travis Geisler and Mike Nelson, I said, you know, you folks are attracting some great people to our organization. And this business has changed. It's more technical now. It's a little bit in our, in our bailiwick. Uh, and to me, uh, you know, we're executing. And, you know, with a leader like Brad, who really cares about the team, it's not about just Brad Keselowski. I want to let you know that. He is every day trying to make our team better. So, you know, that's motivating me. And, you know, this is a great opportunity. Obviously, you know, when you're racing against, I call it the gold standard, the best in the business. Uh, and Rick Hendricks is a great friend of mine. I have a lot of respect for him, both on the business side and also certainly on the racing side. And, and Johnson is, is a cool cat. He knows how to get it done. He's done it five times. So just being in the league with him, you know, I guess it's, uh, you know, the final day you're teeing up, uh, 
you know, the last 18 are in the same foursome, so uh, that's a pretty good day. Let's go with Claire B., Shannon, and then Mike Brunel. Go ahead, Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Roger, Brad has been very clever. He's been very light. He seems to, we're all looking for a crack. We haven't seen it. Jimmy sort of trying to get into his head yesterday and saying, you know, the pressure really hits once you get on the track. When you least expect it, all of a sudden the magnitude of this is going to hit. What have you seen in Brad? Do you really believe that he's handling all this the way that we're seeing it? And, 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 and how much do you think that all of this is going to affect him in one moment before this race is over? Well, I think that, uh, you know, he's been training, you know, over the last uh, 13 or 14 weeks to get where he is. And, uh, you know, obviously we, when you look at the consistency, uh, you know, starting 24th and, and many times during that race, he let people go by because he knew where he needed to go, be ready to go with a hundred laps to go last week, uh, certainly the race at Texas. You know, he's a calculating driver. He's smart. I think his windshield is much wider than many of the drivers, I meaning he's seeing what's going on and he's, I think, rehearsed it with Paul, things that can happen. He's done it with the team and, and he's, uh, he's a student. And I think today we've got a great athlete, a great race driver, but also someone that's thinking, he's a thinking man's driver, which is very important in today's sport. Let's go to the right over here to Shannon. Raise your hand, Shannon, Mike Brunel to the left, and then David Newton. Shannon Spake, ESPN. Just looking back at, uh, in September, uh, the situation with Will Power, wondering what kind of advice you've given Brad and that team about what happened in that race and, and how you're using that experience to kind of help them this weekend. Shannon, we haven't even talked about it. It's not even a factor as far as I'm concerned. You have Will Power, who is the best on road courses, uh, trying to get his feet under him on ovals. This is a case where at a mile and a half track, a place uh, that Brad has excelled this year. So to me, two different circumstances, uh, not a discussion item as far as Penske racing. Over here to the left, Mike yeah, Brudnell. Mike uh, Brudnell, uh, Detroit Free Press. Uh, Roger, um, you move to Ford next year, but can you speak to the commitment Dodge has uh, provided uh, you this year and, uh, and your relationship with them? Um, and, and it's strange, you know, do, they, they could have a, a championship and then they're leaving the sport, you're moving over to Ford. But uh, can you, you know, the relationship between you and Dodge? Well, Dodge uh, obviously has been a great partner. We've been, a, been with them for, for 10 years. Uh, the support they've given us, uh, you know, over this last uh, 12 months has been doubled up, in fact. Uh, the fact that they knew early on, and when you make a move like we had to, they had to know, we had to know that uh, this change was going to be made. But I would say it's all hands on deck. Uh, we have a great relationship. You know, we represent them in the retail auto network, uh, so we're a big supporter of their products. And to me, it's just one of those things, uh, timing maybe, uh, budgets and other things that really made the difference. But... I'm hoping that they'll be back in in 2014, and maybe our results, uh, you know, might uh, help accelerate that for them to get back in the sport on a full-time basis. Let's go right here, David Newton, Holly Kane, Gary Long. Yeah, David Newton, ESPN. Um, Roger, you, you see a lot of young drivers out there that never get a break, never get a chance. A lot's been made about Brad getting that one chance in Ted Musgrave's truck back in 2007 for Junior to see him. Jimmy was talking yesterday about how he not hit the wall at Watkins Glen in the nationwide truck that Jeff Gordon may not have paid a lot of attention to him or, or not put a face with a name. Is that just a product of the way this sport is? Are there a lot of guys like Brad and Jimmy and those guys out there that can do what they're doing here, that they just, just need those breaks? And, you know, you're a guy that's been studying talent for a long time. Is, have you seen guys just get overlooked? Or? Well, I think uh, if we go back and, and look at our team over the last uh, – say 20 years, we might not have uh, looked deep enough, you know, into the, the drivers that are out there. I think we're doing that now. Obviously, we work with Justin, uh, you know, work with Parker, Ryan Blaney, and I think that, uh, you know, we have to have these younger drivers on our radar screen because it takes time. You just cannot jump into this sport overnight and be at the top. It takes trucks, it takes nationwide, and then obviously cups. And I think there's uh, a lot of young talent out there, but again, you've got to know how to win. So we have to look for drivers who have had, who have won in an A series or, or multiple series. I think there has to be today because the technology has gotten to be so much of a part of what's going on, this feedback, this feedback between the engineering and the crew chiefs and the driver. And also then, of course, you know, the main thing is we've got to have sponsors. So we have to have a, a commercial oriented driver to a certain extent. So when you look at all these different uh, 
attributes uh, that you have to have by any particular candidate as a driver, uh, but you got to build those. They might come with one, they might come with two, but uh, to me, uh, you know, we're always looking now, you know, for people. Lewis Hamilton, I guess, uh, at McLaren, I understand that uh, uh, Ron Dennis hired him when he was just a young man driving go-karts. So to me, uh, you know, I think everybody in this garage area today is looking at the, at the young talent to try to build, uh, you know, build their team. Let's go with Holly Kane, Gary Long, Jenna Fryer. Go ahead, Holly. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Roger, I think because of all the success you've had in auto racing in general, some people still find it hard to believe that you haven't won a NASCAR uh, Cup championship yet. Rusty told me yesterday he figured that you guys would have won four or five together when he was when he was driving with you. What what was the difference now? What clicked? What made it happen for you guys now after all these years? Well, we've been close. Uh, you know, we've won a lot of races. We haven't had as number of chances because when you look at our statistics, the number of starts that we've had on the team. So, and basically, there's been some super competition out there. When you look at the the, the, the great teams that we compete against, I think that uh, what's happened, you know, we've been able to, you know, have a focus. And one of the things that probably that people maybe haven't even thought about is we've gone to two cars. And I can tell you that decision to run two cars where we're focusing, and if we've got something good, we can get it on both cars. And I think the fact that we had a little bit of a bumpy start with AJ, AJ did a great job for us. And, and you know, I'm a big supporter of his going forward. Sam jumping in and supporting uh, uh, the opportunity to help, uh, help Brad. But I think uh, the two car team has helped us. I think from an engineering standpoint, uh, we've stepped up our game. If you looked at our roster of people, you know, we've probably added you know, more people from in the engineering side of our business, our wind tunnel program, you know, the guys that are building our cars now, the support we've had from Dodge. So it's, it's, I think it's a multitude of things that have made a difference. The business was a lot different in the 90s. We didn't have the technology. And to me, today, the cars are so tight with the templates and things you have to do. And we got a great driver. I think today, uh, Brad is young. Uh, and and he certainly uh, hasn't. He's not on a plateau. That's for sure. Every race he gets better. I just just watching him last week because I watch him from the spotter stand. I know when we're good and I know when we're bad. Let's go, uh, Gary Long, Jenna Fryer, and Lewis Frank. Go ahead, Gary. Roger Penske Racing in the last 14, 16 months has gone through the split with Kurt, the episode with AJ, and the ramifications, uh, the need to reshape your 2013 agenda. How does this equate to the normal ebbs and flows of this business for all the years you've been in it? And how has this impacted you personally, if at all? Well, I think, uh, you know, I work in the business world every day. And, uh, you know, when you read the newspaper, you know something's happening. And every day isn't a good day. And I guess that uh, I've decided every day is not a good day in racing also. But uh, I think we're motivated. Uh, you know, we've used racing, I've said it before, you know, as a common thread, you know, through our company. And uh, to me, it shows the execution, uh, the teamwork, uh, and the integrity. And I guess that as long as we're able to, to demonstrate quality on the racetrack and we have sponsors, you know, like Miller, been with us now over 20 years, people like Shell Pennzoil, Discount Tire, and the folks that are coming with us and are giving us long-term commitments, that's giving us stability that maybe you didn't have, maybe some of the other teams haven't had, but that to me is going to give us a chance to build even a better platform as we go forward. To me personally, you know, it's another day in the office. Jenna Fryer, Lewis Frank, Brian Nelson. Go ahead, Jenna. Jenna Fryer, AP. You said last week um, when asked why you didn't win, why you haven't won a cup championship before, maybe you, that your focus hadn't always been over here. Has the addition of Brad made you focus a little bit more over here? Has he demanded more of your time? Well, there's no question that uh, – you know, Brad is in contact with me uh, every day, uh, and you know how. <laughs> uh, so, uh, a text. <laughs> I'm not a tweeter at this point. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's going to be next year. I don't know. I don't know what he's got for me. But he's, uh, he's passionate about the sport, and he wants me to be involved as he has the rest of the team. And I think that, uh, you know, we've stepped it up. Uh, I'm, I'm very anxious uh, you know, to have Joey join. Joey seems to be the same... Uh, same kind of person. He's on the phone and things that he wants to be sure we get done. So I'd have to say that uh, Brad has not only pushed me as an individual, but he's pushed the team in a positive direction because 
and he's delivering. It's one thing when someone's pushing you and they don't deliver, but he seems to be able to give us uh, that extra push, but deliver on, on the race weekends. And you know, that's what we're expecting him to do this weekend. Let's go Lewis Frank, Marty Smith, and Bob Pockers. Uh, Lewis Frank of uh, Reuters and Speed Week. Roger, you're not known as, as a, a speculator, wild gambler, maybe years ago with Penske truck, but uh, Paul Wolf appears to have taken some chances and, and uh, with some very good pit calls, maybe in connection with uh, Brad. I was wondering, what qualities do you see in Paul that you admire? Well, I think Paul, uh, the one thing about Wolf, he was a driver. Uh, he's had to build his own cars, and he certainly understands uh, the business. Interesting. Uh, as you know, uh, Brad uh, works with paralyzed veterans, and after a couple of race weekends, he, he, in fact, it was at Bristol, he has four or five of these paralyzed veterans come to the track, and we have a two-seat car, and he takes them for a ride. It was interesting that Paul Wolf was uh, on the track uh, making some pretty fast laps. I said, maybe I can hire you as a driver, but uh, uh, he's got experience, and, and he is, uh, he's been the glue. I think he's been a good... Uh, sounding board for Brad because he's been a driver and he understands the cars completely. And that's what it takes. Uh, he's calm, he's cool. There's been a lot of comparisons, uh, you know, with that relationship between Brad and Paul and, and, and Chad Knauss and Jimmy, you know, those guys are, are the best. And, you know, if we can just be in their shadow and in their draft and, and stay with them this weekend, uh, you know, we're going to have a great season. But uh, he's been a big help to us. But, you know, Paul was out there. I mean, he was – had running cars with different drivers back uh, in nationwide, and, and and Brad and I saw him as a, as someone we could bring him on board. So this is this team has evolved. It's not something that you just overnight. It's taken some time. Certainly, the championship on nationwide was was critical, and you think Brad's won now, I think 13 nationwide races, eight or nine Cup races, just in three years. So when you think about that, and in m many of those wins have been, you know, with Wolf. So you'd have to say that he's. Uh, a key part of the uh, peak of, of the formula of, of, of our team. Up to the right here, Marty Smith, and we'll go Bob Pockris and then Reed Spencer. Marty Smith, ESPN. Uh, Mr. Pinsky, what attribute that Brad displays most surprises you now that you didn't see when you made the decision that he would be a guy you would hire? Well, I think the uh, most important thing that's happened, uh, he's gained the respect in the garage area. Uh, because, you know, early on there were, you know, he was rough, he was bumping people. Uh, there was with Carl Edwards and other people. But I think that he's uh, emerged. Uh, he's learned like a lot of the great drivers have gone through that, you know, that rough patch. Uh, he's emerged. And I think that to me, the speed that he's come from where he was when he first started with us to where he is today, smooth, understanding the car, and ultimately being a winner to me is, uh, is amazing. And uh, he's done it in just... Uh, 36 months uh, with us. So when you put those stats on the ground and see what he's done, and he's got a great future ahead of him, and you know we, we you know expect him to deliver for us you know over a long period of time. Let's go, Bob Pockris, Reed Spencer, Mike Embry. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. A lot has been made of Brad's upbringing in a racing family, and I was curious if you knew Bob Keselowski or knew that team at all uh, before you ever met Brad. Well, you know, I knew the Kozlowskis, uh, Bob, very well because, you know, owning the Michigan Speedway, uh, you know, they were our local guys. And uh, they, they'd come out there, and I remember I didn't really m met Brad specifically, but, you know, Ron and Bob were guys that I knew very well out at the track because they'd come out there and unload and, and race it at the Michigan track. So, you know, they're, they're our local guys. And uh, to me, uh, Bob's, his dad's a terrific person, you know, Kay, his mom, uh, you know, they, they mortgaged everything for these kids to go racing. And I think people might not know that. And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Brad uh, is really giving me, he's paying them back now because he's not only been able to support them you know, as a family, but also, uh, you know, with the success he's had as an individual and also as a race driver. Let's go Reed Spencer, Mike Embry, Jim Utter. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire Service. Roger, um, over the course of three years, when you hired Brad, and when you promoted him to Cup, Kurt was part of the package. Uh, after Kurt's departure, are you surprised at how quickly he's been able to rise to the level of leadership that he has and fill that void that um, that existed when Kurt left? 
Well, obviously, uh, you know, that departure, you know, we hadn't planned on that, but, you know, as things worked out, it happened. And when it did, I sat down, uh, you know, with Brad and said, you're going to have to be the leader of this team. And, you know, he said to me you know, many times when he was racing with Kurt, he said, I've got to get better so I can help Kurt. Interesting when you think about that. That's, he said that to me not once, but many times. And to think that, uh, you know, once Kurt left and he stepped into the leadership position, uh, He's, he's just taken it over, and I think the whole team feels that when he goes to a test and when he's dealing, you know, whether it's with Sam and they debrief, I think a lot of things we've come together. We don't have two teams. That's one thing. We have one team. There's no question because the interface, you know, the way our shop's set up, uh, the way we build our cars, uh, where our crew chiefs sit, they're all together, just like you are here in this, in this media room. You're side by side, not in different buildings, and I think that's helped us. And Brad's been a big catalyst, you know, in that in that society. Let's go, Mike Embry. Then we'll go to uh, Jim Utter, and then Al Pierce. Mike Embry, Speed.com. Roger, you mentioned earlier your role as a spotter. I assume you're doing that Sunday. Uh, talk some about that. I, I know you have a lot of folks that you employ that probably could fill that role, but but you obviously want to do it. Talk about your role there. Well, uh, I'm kind of a coaching spotter. I'm. Uh, Joey Meyer, uh, and I don't know if you've listened to him, but I, I think he might be, you know, one of the understated guys on the team. He doesn't set the car up and doesn't drive it, but I can tell you one thing. You listen to that radio and, and what his insight, I mean, just last week uh, when, when uh, Jeff, uh, you know, was, was in a mood to go after Boyer, uh, Joey saw it. He told Brad ahead of time, so he even saw Brad slow down a little bit uh, as he got into three. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm up there because uh, – Quite honestly, I, I can always watch the cars go by the start-finish line. I like to see if we're competitive, who's driving, you know, what's going on on the racetrack. And uh, we've got professional spotters for, for all the guys. And, you know, I have I come over from time to time, and uh, I'll, I'll make a comment to Brad, uh, you know, when I think it's appropriate. But, uh, you know, I'm really uh, – I guess I'm the backup guy if their battery goes down. That's about all. All right, let's go with um, Jim Utter, Al Pierce. Nate Ryan. Jim Hutter, Charlotte Observer. Roger, you mentioned earlier about um, talking about Brad, and it's one thing to say something, but his ability to back it up and how much success he's had in a short period of time. Talking to Paul Wolf last week, um, he also said one of the reasons why we don't get too bent out of shape when Brad runs his mouth is because he always backs it up. And I just wondered if you thought – I know he's gained a lot of respect, but he still seems at times to rub some other competitors the wrong way. I wondered if that, if you thought that was one of the reasons, not a sense of jealousy, so to speak, but just how quickly success is found him. Well, anyone that's uh, you know had the success that he has in a short period of time, uh, you know, you know, people uh, look up to drivers like that. Uh, but I think everybody, I think the quality that everyone would vote yes on, this guy's a race driver. All the other trappings, uh, everything else we put on the Christmas tree, only make it look better. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, he's consistent. Uh, I think he, uh, he cares about the sport. Uh, he cares about the fans. And, and if you ask the officials, I think they feel that he's, he's playing ball too. So uh, I, I can't get into what people think about him. All I know is the people in the garage area, many people have come up to me and say, this guy's really doing a job for you. And these are owners who today would love to have him drive for him. So to me, my, those are my peers, you know, that are saying, hey, you got the best in the business. So that's, that's how my report card, not what might be said by someone else in a, a different conversation. I think even Carl Edwards would say, you know, that this, this young man has really come a long way. And those guys had some, you know, some real tough fights there for a while. I think that's all changed. Al Pierce, Nate Ryan, Mark Ashenfelter. Yeah, Roger, Al Pierce, Model Week. As, as a measure, of how much you want this thing Sunday. As a yardstick measurement, would you give up next year's Indy 500 win for Sunday? That's just a measuring stick. I was just going to use the top of the flagpole as the, my measuring stick, how much I want it. Uh, top of the American flagpole. That's a hard one to ask. Obviously, uh, this comes first. And uh, something that we've never achieved uh, as a company, as a team, and to me, that's the most important thing I have to deal with right now is uh, Sunday afternoon's race here at Homestead. So uh, I'll answer the question on Indianapolis uh, after Sunday. Let's go Nate Ryan, Mark Ashenfelter, Dwight Drum. 
uh, Nate Ryan, USA Today. Uh, Roger, talking about how Brad talks to you daily and, and is so involved as a leader, can you give any specific examples? Is he, is he talking personnel moves with you? Is he, are you guys planning ahead for next year with Ford stuff? I mean, what, what sort of stuff is he, is he in there at a very specific level? I, I would say all the above. I mean, we're, we're talking about personnel. We're talking about uh, many times, uh, you know, what we're, he has a list. And I guess he and Paul, what I've asked them to do, it's easy to say want to do this, but, but you know, generally they provide me with a list of the things that they feel we can make the team better and the car better. In fact, to the point, we, Brad thought we should do our fitness center. We should upgrade our fitness center. Nothing to do with racing, but the team, the human capital. So we go through that list and I sit down with uh, Mike Nelson and Travis and uh, sit down with Tim Sindrick and, and we check those things off. And I'm looking for the list because the list has made us a lot better. And to me, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about our sponsors and what does he need to do to be sure he's delivering what the sponsors want. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we're talking a lot, uh, you know, today about uh, younger drivers that we can bring on the team. Uh, he's a big supporter. And uh, we've had conversations uh, about how to make his truck faster. So it's, uh, it's a myriad of uh, topics. But, uh, you know, they're all focused, uh, you know, on our team and, and racing. Go ahead, Mark. Mark Ashenfelder, ESPN. You mentioned the young drivers. What are the plans for Ryan Blaney for next year? Well, right now, uh, uh, I know there's some people asked me some questions when I walked in. You know, we've signed Sam up uh, to, to drive uh, the number 12 car, Alliance car, in, uh, in Nationwide next year. Uh, we have a commitment uh, for a number of uh, cup races which uh, on a third car, which uh, Sam will, uh, will uh, be there to, to run those races. And, and Blaney, at this point, uh, uh, we're considering him to be uh, to drive the truck. Uh, I haven't announced it yet. It's not a done deal, but uh, you know, like to see him uh, in the truck, and also we'll provide him uh, some nationwide rides. So you know, we started with him, maybe run two or three this year, and I think he'll end up with seven or eight. So you know, we think that he's a fine young man, and is, he's got a lot to learn, like they all do. But I think he's certainly uh, again coming from a family that's been racing and. Uh, he seems to, uh, you know, have the talent. There's a lot of good young talent out there today, so we certainly want to support him. Dwight? Uh, Dwight Drum, Racetake.com. Uh, Mr. Penske, with all the great accomplishments at Penske Racing, how would you compare and rate uh, the uh, chasing the, the championship, uh, Sprint Cup championship in 2012? Well, we've talked about it, uh, Tim Sendrick and I have, uh, and uh, our people, uh, you know, th this is the pinnacle of, of achievements that, uh, that we could get uh, uh, in motor racing. You know, this, this NASCAR Sprint Cup uh, and the competition, the 38 weekends, and, you know, it's, I think I heard Jimmy Johnson or someone say it's a war out there. It is. And, and to be standing at the end uh, with the American flag in your hand when it's all over and be the champion, uh, you know, is something real special. And uh, we've not achieved it. And, you know, I've said I was goal-oriented earlier. And one of our goals is to win this championship. And uh, I kid these guys said, I don't want to sit down in the front row anymore. I want to be up on the stage so I see who's at the party. <laughs> Take one more. Anybody else have a final question for Roger? I guess we got three, actually. Mike, Mike, and David. Mike Brunel, Mike Mulhern, and we'll end with David. Uh, Roger, um, Detroit's a stick and ball town, and you know a lot of the sports, uh, you know, stories up there about the Lions and the Tigers and the Red Wings. But where would you rate this if, um, as a story, if Brad can win on Sunday uh, for for you know Detroit for Michigan? Uh, it would be a first for a Michigan-born driver. Well, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I've been in business in Michigan for a long time, lived in Michigan, and. Uh, you know, we bought the Speedway back so many years ago. And, you know, motor racing, uh, you know, we come uh, to the track and race two times a year. So it's not uh, like 100 games in baseball and so many football games that they have with the Lions. But I would say this, that uh, if we could bring back to Michigan and, and to Detroit the NASCAR championship, uh, I think it's a big deal. And uh, for the state, uh, you know, for the city, and, you know, obviously uh, for Rochester Hills, for, for Brad and uh, – and as a, as a big Detroit supporter, if I could do that, it would be a, it would be a great time for us. And uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone in the, that loves racing will say, hey, it's about time. Mike Mulhern. 
Your advice is always well respected. What would you suggest Dodge do for 213 or 214? You've talked with those people for, for 10 years. What would your advice be to them for NASCAR? Well, you know, I've talked to uh, Dodge about, uh, you know, what might be available. You know, we've got, uh, what, 16 nationwide cars and probably 60 engines. And I said that it might be a good idea if there's some young people out there, people you want to support, could you take this, the things that we have, we'd supply them. And, and they could take them and run them. But uh, I think there's a big interest. Uh, but as you know, we got to step back a minute. You know, Chrysler has, has come out of uh, bankruptcy. They've done a great job in their market share. They're focusing on their retail business. SRT <laughs> is just one of their lines of business. But I think uh, Reed Biglin, who has been attended the races along with Beth Peretta and Ralph Jills, I think there's a, a strong interest you know, to get back in. And I think they looked at what was available to them going into 13 was with just a year's notice. And they did, weren't able to put the combination maybe together that they wanted. But I see them uh, very interested in the sport and will support the sport. And I know that the Viper is a big program for them that they have in GT going forward. But uh, I hope to see them back in 14. But, you know, we've got some parts and pieces that, uh, you know, might be pretty good for someone. That's a sales call I just made. Final question, David, raise your hand if we could get uh, final, Mike, final question right here for, for Roger. Willie, on a light note, uh, what do you think of uh, Brad's fine for having a phone in the car? Did you uh, support him having the phone in the car? He got a lot of publicity for NASCAR at Daytona. Well, I could say this, but I probably shouldn't. Have. I, I don't know if it was a Verizon phone or a Sprint phone, right? So, no, on a, on, a, on a serious note, uh, uh, Brad's got to work that out with NASCAR. I'm... Uh, I'm just the car owner, and that's if he has to pay a fine, that's his fine. I got to pay mine, he has to pay his. So uh, I think it's all fine. 